The world's largest gathering of human-like robots is underway in Geneva. The United Nations AI for Good Global Summit seeks to showcase how artificial intelligence can be used to create a more inclusive and sustainable world. Our more than 50 robots will take center stage at the summit, including Ida, the first ultra-realistic droid artist, the humanoid rock singer Desdemona, and Amika, the world's most lifelike robot, advanced lifelike robot. The two-day event will examine possible frameworks and guardrails to support safe AI use. It will culminate with a panel of robots taking questions from journalists in the world's first human-robot press conference oh, that happens tomorrow. More Trent Murray joins us live from Berlin. Trent, apart from the world's first human robot press conference as due tomorrow, what else can we expect? Uh, yeah, it's not your usual UN style meeting, is it? I'm, I can report that the reporters in the room will still be human, so we're not quite out of the job yet. But people hosting the press conference will indeed be these humanoid robots. Look, there is a very serious side to all of this. I think the UN is recognising that technology in this area is just galloping ahead at light speed. And so what they're trying to do is to send a message that despite a lot of the doom and gloom and concern uh, that is around humanoids and robots, robots and AI, that actually there can be some very good work done by them in order to try and help humankind in the future. And so that is why, as you said, this conference kicking off in Geneva, the star power very much around the robots themselves, but also a lot of experts in this space, academics, uh, people that invented the robots as well. And there is a long list uh, of those attending. You have got uh, uh, Grace, who is considered the world's foremost nursing assistant robot. The idea is that potentially in the future, we could get healthcare support from these types of AI. We've got uh, Mika, the world's first CEO robot, and also Nadine, uh, who actually has just returned from Singapore, where she was working in a trial in a, a, a care home for the elderly, uh, effectively trying to combat issues like loneliness and, and playing games and stuff with some people uh, that were very elderly and patients in care. So, look... It's a bit different. It's not your usual meeting that we would see in Geneva. But I think, as I say, the UN just sees that this is an area where it maybe just needs to get a little bit more involved with just given some of the huge societal impacts having these types of robots living with us could have. Oh, uh, Trent, you mentioned the UN trying to, I suppose, put a positive gloss on artificial intelligence. And one, one of the angles is that it may help the UN reach it's a sustainability development goals, which are, we have been fairly elusive so far in terms of success. Yeah, that's right. And actually, the head of the ITU, which uh, is the, the specialist telecommunications division of the UN hosting this conference, has said, look, frankly speaking, the UN is just not hitting its sustainable development goals. I mean, just to remind viewers what some of those goals are, they're things like no poverty, zero hunger, quality education, good health and well-being. The idea of this conference is that maybe, just maybe, AI and robots robots could help with some of that. Not all of it, we have to be realistic, but certainly with some of those goals. And so that's what this conference is being centred around. But then on the flip side, we should also mention that the UN has just announced that the UN Security Council will actually have its own meeting on July 18th to discuss some of the more concerning elements of AI. We know uh, that what the UK ambassador to that council announced in the past 24 hours is that there'll be briefings by experts on how uh, there, there could be an existential, existential threat, I should say, to humanity because of this rapid development of AI without it being regulated. So look, obviously, a very fast moving space. We're obviously looking well into the future with much of this. But I think what you're seeing from both sides of the UN there is that there is a, a hope that maybe robots could help us. But there is also some concern that they could harm us. And so they're trying to cover all their bases there with these different types of meetings. All right. Thanks for that. Trent Murray, live for us there from Berlin.